Welcome back to London where I'm beginning to wonder if the sun actually exists as it's been that long since I've seen it but there has been some good news to cheer up the place. UK GDP has come in much better than expected, shooting up by 1% but it's worth remembering those numbers are affected by special events in the second and third quarter so is it actually anything worth getting worked up about? I've been speaking to Ishak Siddiqui from ETX Capital about these latest figures. So 1%, some people get yep. very excited about it. The government will probably try mm -hmm. to sell this as their policy succeeding. Are you yeah. equally excited? Uh, we're not too excited. Uh, when you look at the figures, 1% is, is very encouraging. Um, but when you outstrip the one-offs, as we all know, the um, Olympics and Paralympic tickets, Jubilee weekend and the additional holidays, um, you could say that underlying growth was around about 0.3%. That's still better than some expectations for around flat to even no growth. Um, but when you look at the overall picture, we've got uh, a weakening global economy, uh, slowdown in emerging market growth. Most importantly, we have a Eurozone uh, debt drama, which continues. We haven't seen any end to that, and that's going to continue um, for, for, for the, for in the near term. If you look at yesterday's German uh, data, the IFO and the, the PMI and services data said that it reflected that the, power, the, the, the region's powerhouse is now uh, looking at, at a weaker growth prospects. And that puts the UK's economy uh, into a major risk in terms of what sort of growth progression we have um, and and for that reason it would be false to get too excited at the moment I think stock markets reflect in that the FTSE hasn't changed much since the outcome of the, the reading sterling has um, seen a nice pickup to about 1.61 but that's mainly on the back of David Cameron dropping a hint yesterday that good news will come and we've seen a, a bit of buying in sterling but that 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 leaves a lot of questions for, for upside momentum now for the sterling and, and, and we, we, we expect a retracement from these levels yeah, where does the growth come from the UK economy previously mm -hmm. There was lots of attention paid to the housing sector and construction yep. sector. Mm -hmm. That's actually decreased by 2.5%. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where does growth come from the UK economy now? What's, what are the most important sectors? The, the, the two most important sectors that we've seen from the numbers today is industrial production, which is up about 1.1, and services 1.3. Um, encouraging to see that services back up. Um, we've seen over the, in the build-up to the, to the report over this since the start of the fourth quarter, uh, retail sales are much stronger than expected uh, and that's been reflected in the numbers and at the same time we've also seen um, improvement in uh, the labour market. So when you look at it on balance, the UK economy is growing and it, it, it is very encouraging that, that we are seeing this improvement and at this point right now it seems to be tracking the, the, the recovery in uh, the US uh, as opposed to the slowdown in uh, Asia and in, in, in the Eurozone. And we shouldn't all be too sceptical mm -hmm. because, for example, the labour market, mm -hmm. if you compare the labour market to France, mm -hmm. it's looking relatively healthy, although it's yes. still too high for yes, most yeah. of us. And, and it's a good time that we are seeing UK corporates now who've been reporting numbers and, and on, on balance the numbers are better than some of the European pairs who had strong results from the likes of Arb Holdings and, and Reckitt Ben Kaiser and some of the big UK corporates which is that suggests that hiring is back on board and we're seeing more people in jobs and, and, that, and that gives gives way to the idea that the, the, that the, the UK economy is on a, on a strong path to, to growth. <laughs> What does this all mean for Mervyn King and further QE? What? Everyone expected it, but mm -hmm. now we've had these slightly more positive figures. Yep. Do you think he's going to launch another programme? This week, Mervyn King said that uh, the BOE is in a wait and see mode. Um, I think it's going to take a step back from the wait and see. It's tipping in favour of no change in policies. It's going to retain its current stance. Um, we'd have to see a, a collapse in economic activity and a further deterioration in the global economy before the, the, the BOE considers um, launching uh, another round of quantitative easing or even changing its rate policy. We could possibly, if, if we continue seeing strong econo economic data out of the UK, we could be in for a rate increase, um, but that surely will not happen until the start of next year. It seems like bets are off until the end of the year, and, and, and UK politicians and uh, uh, the BOE are going to wait for more data to see where we exactly where we exactly are in the UK economy before, start, before they start making moves. Just to finish off, mm -hmm. where, where does the UK economy go from here? 
we've got had this one percent figure now, but surely yeah. that just means in the next quarter we're going to see we're a contraction see, yeah. and we could see another dip back down into recession. Exactly, we? we we are. This is what we're trying to figure out: is this a, is this a turning point for the UK economy? Um, and all eyes are going to be on the fourth quarter number now, um, including any um, revisions that we may see up till then for the third quarter number. Um, Again, much is dependent on, on, on upcoming data, and if we continue seeing strong numbers, then, then we can see a, a strong result in the, in the fourth quarter. But it's going to be very difficult to maintain that 1% that growth that we've seen in the third quarter because you know, we don't have the Olympics this quarter or we don't have a Jubilee weekend. Um, so most of the bets are going to be on uh, a strong rise on the retail sales side with the, with the Christmas shopping uh, spree, uh, sending mo uh, consumers back into the shops onto the high street to, to start buying again. Ishak Siddiqui there breaking down the numbers for you. That's all we have time for for this edition of London Direct, but there'll be much more to come here on Duke's Copy TV, so stay tuned. Goodbye for now.